All right, today what we want to talk about is we want to talk about telescopes. Telescopes are, 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 are how astronomers collect information about the sky, the stars, the sun, everything that's up there. And so telescopes, the tool that we use um, to study the, study, um, the universe, is uh, the topic of this chapter. So let's dive into this as we begin. So, Astronomy Cod Podcast 4.1, Telescopes. Now, the chapter is about telescopes, but today what we want to do is we want to learn specifically about telescopes and, and more specifics in other podcasts. So uh, here we have a large uh, telescope in an observatory found in Wikipedia. I think it's a little distorted, but that's kind of the idea. You can see the telescope there. Now, let's kind of uh, talk ourselves through it. The tool of the trade, it's the telescope. All right, so stars and other celestial objects are too far away to test directly. Obviously, you can't go take a, a, a chunk of the sun and um, grab it because, of course, it's too far away, and also it's pretty hot. <laughs> so we have to passively collect radiation. Now, we've talked about radiation. It's actually interesting that it's not just um, uh, uh, light that you can see, but we can collect light that you can't see, which we've talked about earlier in previous podcasts. And so extremely faint objects makes this very difficult. So we need some kind of a telescope. Here's an ancient telescope right here. All right, so we need a specialized instrument. All right, so if we need to measure the brightness, the spectra, and the positions with high precisions, then we need what's called a mirrored telescope. Most telescopes, and we're going to talk about this in just a few minutes, most telescopes are actually mirrors. Most people think of telescopes being these lenses, like a pair of eyeglasses or whatever. Um, that's not typically how telescopes are made anymore. That was the beginning of telescopes. That's what Galileo and Newton and all those guys, that's what they used. But uh, we're now talking um, about what they call reflecting telescopes. All right. But interesting enough is that uh, modern astronomers, they rarely use an eyepiece. More often, they use a computer terminal. So because the, what they're more interested in is the numbers, and so these graphs. And so most of the times, they're st sitting in front of a computer. And when they're sitting in front of a computer, it's a computer, it's not a computer. If they're sitting in front of a computer, then they um, get data uh, that way. So as opposed to looking at some distant star, um, through a telescope and sort of the old ways, it's not done that way anymore. We look at graphs and charts and um, things like that. All right, now, the powers of a telescope. Let's talk about that. Now, there's a couple things. This is kind of more specific definition, something called the collecting power. The collecting power is um, this right here. The bigger the telescope, the more light you collect. So here we have on the, on the picture just kind of a home uh, telescope. And uh, this is a good home telescope. But it, you know, the size of how much it, uh, light it can collect is as big as essentially the mirror that it is. So it's, this is kind of a small one, OK? Um, but we can get ones that are um, the size of a football. Well, not football fields, but we can get much, much larger ones. Okay, so the focusing power uses mirrors or lenses to bend the path of the light and create images. So the, the idea is we want to take a mirror or a lens and we want to create uh, an image. And we're going to do that in class and you'll kind of see how that works. And then lastly, there's something called the resolving power. So these are like definitions. And what this can do is it can pick out the details of an image. Sometimes when you see a star, when you look up at a star in the sky, you know what you're going to see is you're going to see, well, one star. But if you take a look at it through a telescope, it might turn out that it's actually uh, two stars or more. And see, so the resolving power of your eyeballs is not good enough is that right? spelled? I don't know. Not, not good enough for you to see that that's actually two stars. But if you were to increase the power of a telescope, you might say, oh, there's two stars there. That's called the resolving power. All right? Now, there's also something called the light gathering power. All right, let's kind of uh, put some meat on this. This is, now it's going to get mathematical again, it's the light collected is proportional to the collector area. Area. The pupil for the eye, or a mirror or lens from a telescope. So if you take a look, basically here's the gist here. It's very simple. Here is a small telescope. So if we look at this telescope, it has um, um, a certain amount of light it can collect. But if I have a bigger um, telescope, I can collect more light. And if you collect more light, you will get a brighter image. All right. So you get a dimmer image with a small telescope and a brighter image with a bigger. You could also think of your eye, right? Your eye is essentially a lens, and it can collect light and such. And so your eye, um, but it doesn't have a very large uh, amount of light it can collect. And so then the light, the telescope, what it does is it uh, funnels um, the light to your eyes, and it gives you a brighter images. 
Okay, and small changes in the radius give a large uh, number of photons. Scott, why is that the case? Because it's a radius, it's a circle, right? And the area, um, if you remember from uh, math class, um, the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. And what I'm talking about is r squared. So if you were to make this uh, circle right here of a light, and if I had a bigger one, the r would be bigger, but the amount of area would be much, much bigger in um, figure B, let's call this, than in figure A. Okay. So telescopes described by lens or mirror are described in inches. So how big, how many inches or how many centimeters is the mirror or the lens? All right, focusing power. All right, now let's talk about this. This is kind of an important point. There's something called refraction. All right, everybody say refraction. I, you didn't say it right. So say refraction. Refraction. Okay. Something about light that's intriguing is it can do something called refract or the process of refraction. Now, what is refraction? That's where light moving at an angle from one material to another will bend due to its process. This is called refraction. So if I have light coming into a lens, this is a lens. This lens could be your eye, or it could be a pair of sungla or sunglasses, eyeglasses, or something. And what it does is it bends the light, and it reaches something called the focal point. And by the way, the length here is called the focal length. All right, you can see that right there from here to here. And that focal length then takes all the light that's coming from the larger thing and focuses it on one little point. And then you can see clearly. So if you were to put your eyeball right here at this pot, this is an eye, um, you could then see things. This is actually how your eye works. Okay. Now, why does this happen? Refraction occurs because the speed of light is different in different materials. We've learned that the speed of light, C, is 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. But that assumes that you're in a vacuum. But uh, if you go through um, particularly like glass or diamonds, things like that, then um, you can get um, it to uh, bend light and then focus it if you shape the, uh, the glass the appropriate way. Now here's how kind of refraction works here. So as light comes into a medium, so let's say just some, some water. So this is a glass of water. What happens is, is the light bends because uh, water is more dense than air, and it bends it, all right? So it just bends it. And so if you were thinking about this, here as it goes through here, hello. So you could have two people right here, and if they're holding hands, when they take a curve, when they take a curve, this outside guy, he's going to have to move faster than the slow guy, isn't he, as they make this turn. And so that kind of helps you understand how that works. Okay, So that's refraction. It's the bending of light when it goes to a different medium. It can be bent through water, like in this picture here, or through glass, or things like that. Okay. Also, interesting thing, refraction causes some other thing. It causes something called dispersion. I say dispersion. Dispersion. That causes the different colors to travel at different speeds through the same material. Now, what does that mean? Well, you may want to pause the video to write this down, but I'll explain this in a, a couple of slides. Um, so the light is being dispersed from the sun as it comes through, and it's responsible for the distortion of the sun near the horizon. Notice that this is the sun looks a lot bigger here. When it's up in the sky normally, it's much smaller. Well, it really isn't smaller. It's being distorted by diffraction. By the way, this is not responsible for the moon illusion when you see the harvest moon. We might have time to talk about that later. Okay. Refraction is also responsible for a couple other things. It's also responsible um, for seeing the twinkling of stars. So if you see a star right here up in the sky, as it comes through our atmosphere, our atmosphere is not a vacuum, it bends the light. All right, And then the wind moves pockets of slightly cooler air across your line of sight, and it causes twinkling. By the way, twinkling, the actual scientific uh, name for twinkling is scintillation. All right? So temperature and density differences in pockets of air shift the image of the star. So where you think you see the star isn't exactly necessarily where the star is. How's that cool? All right. So how does a refracting telescope work? All right. What's in a refracting telescope? Well, it's a lens as employs and then refraction to bend the light. So we have um, light coming in here and then there's a lens right here. And what it does is it then focuses the image, and you can get the image. Uh, telescopes that uh, employ lenses to collect um, the focus are called refractors. So this would be a refracting telescope. I'm not sure that that actually is, but 